are back. Um, we're actually getting set up and we're back on our Volkswagen. And before we go any further, I want to go over what we did last night and what we're going to do today. So let me grab the camera and give me a thumbs up. Okay, I just turned the audio on. I'm really sorry about that. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. I need to know if the audio is working. Um, and what I was about to say is we're getting ready to start. This is a continuing video set from last night. All right, thank you very much, Todd and James. I had the microphone off. So what we're doing, I was getting set up here. We've got some issues I want to cover with you because we went ahead, me and me and the body shop girl went ahead and already wet sanded this stuff. Um, I left the gas tank to show you how to wet sand it, but I had to keep moving here. I want to get this done. But I wanted to show you some situations that arose. And then I want to show you what the finish looks like after we put the inner coat clear on the DBC 500. We had a lot of comments last night that uh, it was going to look like Rhino Liner. It was going to have orange peel in it. It was going to look like shit. My friend Pete knows what he's doing. And I definitely wouldn't have sprayed all that on there if it was going to look like shit and look like fucking orange peel. Okay? So le keep leaving your comments because when you leave a comment like that, that's just showing that you're ignorant and you've never done this before. Basically. So what we got here is we got... All our pieces are painted. You saw last night what happened. I want to go ahead and show you. This is the finish. This has not been sanded. This is directly right after the two coats. It's been drying overnight. All right. And I want you to show you. Look at the finish on that. Very, very smooth. All right. Very, very laid down. Float out nicely. Mixing it 50-50, that's the way you want to go. Now, to refresh what we're talking about here, let's go over to the paint cabinet. And if you look back here, we're talking about the DBC 500, the color blender. We sprayed two full wet coats of that on, bam, bam, right after each other last night. All right, go back to part two, and you'll figure out what we're talking about. So for everybody that was here last night, um, we went ahead and sprayed it. Now I've already wet sanded this down. This is ready for clear coat. This is clear coat ready. We're ready to put two, two I'm sorry, three full wet coats of clear on top of this. Look at the finish on that. Look at the finish. Can you see the gloss retention in that after sanding it with 1500? Do you see that? Yes, Frank Beto, we will be painting your car like this. Um, the fender, look how smooth this came out. Look at the gloss retention. Okay, look at that. This is after 1500 sand job on our color blender. We got over to this fender here. Many of the body shop girl was sanding it and what we found, we found a run. My friend Pete got a run in that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the steps and show you how to remove the run. Um, can we see the run? Let me see if I can find it. Here it is right here. You can kind of see, there's the line right there. There it is right there. So we gotta get that run out. And when you do a job like this, when you're doing this high, high quality, high end paint job such as this, and you're using multi layers of different clears, you got to know how to get that run out. So that's one thing I'm going to show you how to do. And I got the tool sitting over here. Another thing that happened to us was if we look right here on the hood, um, here it is right here. Do you see those little white specks? 
Well, there was some trash that actually was possibly on the primer when I painted it, or I didn't wipe all of the muck off after I waxed and greased it. So it left little specks after I sanded it. And then I believe there was another one. Where is it at? There was another spot here. But we'll find that other spot. And then I'm going to show you how to... Where is it at? Okay. All right. Well, there's, some, there's another little spot on here somewhere. But we're going to go ahead and focus on this section here. And I'm going to show you how to fix that before we clear coat it. And I'm going to explain to you why it's necessary to use, all right, why it's necessary. If you're going to do a double coat, if you're going to do this double clear coat system, this is going to show you why you want to use the color blender, the DBC 500, instead of urethane clear. Now, I got to go back and blend some paint into that. If I was to put urethane clear on here that has a, a, an activator, a hardener, for me to blend some paint into that dry clear, I would have to put epoxy primer on it first. Because the reducer and the paint will react to the urethane clear coat. But by using the system that I have used, and I'm gonna show it again. By using the DBC 500, all that is, is color, bl color blender, it's color blender, which is a clear coat and reducer, that's it. There's no other chemicals in there, there's no colors added, there's nothing. So I can literally take my paint, and if I have to, I can paint on top of this, and it will not react. And that is the key to doing the double clear system like I'm showing you. I've been down the road. I've used two or three. You, you put two coats of urethane on there. You wait three or four days. You color sand it out. You put two or three more coats of urethane. You wait three or four days. And, you, you know, you clear coat it, and then it takes you a week and a half, two weeks to paint it, and you've spent tons and tons of fucking money, tons and tons of time to do a job that I'm showing you how to do in less than 24 hours. We're going to start out with the tank, and I'm going to show you how easy and simple it is to make this clear coat ready. Now, one more thing I want to show you. Look, I am touching this. Okay? Do you see this right here? This is dry. Okay? This is clear coated. This is protected. If it was just base coat paint, I would have just screwed myself. I would have had to wet sand this down, spot epoxy primer, or possibly epoxy prime the whole thing, and then I would have had to repaint it. Another good thing about using the color blender we're going to go back to this little spot here is if there's any fuck ups in it or any jack offs, we can go ahead and get them out without ruining the whole piece that we're painting. So color blender, or should I call it intercoat clear, is your friend when it comes to high end custom paint jobs. So let me get my camera set up here. Oh, okay, let's go over here real quick. I wanna show you what we're using. Just real quick like. So what you're looking at here, you're looking at the products that we're gonna to use to sand our clear coat and get it paint ready, or should I say clear ready. The prep job will be done. The first thing I got is I got a pack, and this is very important. I want everybody to pay attention. I got a pack of white balls, but these are professional white balls, part number L40, 
And these are specifically designed for automotive paint and body use. This is not your blue rag uh, that you buy at Home Depot or possibly your local body shop store. I mean, your automotive uh, parts supplier. These are specifically designed for paint and body use only. They are tack free, they are lint free, and they are static free towels, okay? This is what I suggest to use right here. Now, I don't know how much these cost because I buy them by the case. Um, but the last time I bought a pack of these, I believe they were like $2 or $3. I'm sure with all of the chaos going on, the price has gone up. But this is a necessity and you must have these. Another thing we got here is we got some 1200 wet. The only Thing that we're going to use our 1200 wet for is if we find imperfection or like we have over here a run and you can see that's why this is torn in pieces because I've already sanded the car down the body's done we did that early this morning and there was a run in that so I had to get it out the main tool that you're going to use is this right here this is 1500 now this job is gonna go quick, it's gonna be accurate, and we're not gonna take a lot of time on it. We are not color sanding this to a buff stage sand job. We are color sanding it to remove any imperfections. We're color sanding it to give it a nice surface for our clear coat to grip, and we're also color sanding it in case there is any little dust specks that we need to nib out. The 1500 is going to do it. So these are the tools right here. Of course, you need a bucket of water. You need a sponge and you need a uh, flex block. Let's get over there. Let's get this tank sanded so we can move down the line. I'm going to go ahead and grab my 1500 and bring it over there. So stick with me. Very informative situation going on here. Um, we're making it as easy as possible for you to learn. Um, and DIY Auto School's here. My friend Pete's here. We're at Southwest Rod and Custom today. We're doing a beautiful paint job. So follow along and learn what you got to do to get it done right. And also do it properly. Okay, so what we're looking at here, we are looking at a gas tank that has been epoxy primed, it's been painted black, and then we went ahead and applied our inner coat clear. What we're going to do is we are going to prep this tank now for our final and last destination, which is our urethane clear coat. Whether you're using, uh, whether you're using um, MS52 Matrix or you're using PPG 2021 Concept, all right, this has got to be prepped. It's a beautiful tank. It came out awesome. But what do we do next, my friend Pete? The next thing we're going to do, if you can see this bucket down here, is we're going to get down in our bucket and we're going to get our flex block. Okay, this is a soft block. Black on one side, gray on the other. This is softer than this. If you got a lot of imperfections, possibly some dust specks, you're going to use the black side. If you're going to want to scuff it down and get it ready to do whatever you're going to do, that's the gray side. We're going to take our 1500. We're going to start wrapping that paper around our block, just like this. Now, this is the kicker. We want to keep the water to a minimum on this. Hang on one second. I almost forgot my most important tool, my white ball. I'm going to put that in my pocket right here for now. We want to use minimal, minimal water. We don't want to take our sponge and saturate it. Okay, we want to put our 
sand block in the water and we want to get our sponge and we want to kind of get a lot of that water out of there because we don't want a lot of water. Once again, we are sanding this to re-clear. We're not sanding this to buff. So we're going to take our block, our sanding block, and I noticed it had a little bit of some dust specks up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my black side and I'm going to just do this right here. Now I hope you're sitting down for this because you're going to be shocked. That's ready for clear coat, people. There you go. That's a done deal. Okay. Do you see what I'm doing here? Watch. Watch this. Okay. And here's another reason you want to use a soft block is because the soft block will cover every square inch as you're sanding it. Okay. Very important. Now, what you just saw is I just made that paint ready. This is clear coat ready. Let me get this backside and we'll go over it. Remember I told you don't use a lot of water. Minimal, minimal water. But you got to use a block like I'm using to cover every square inch as you are sanding. Hang on one second. There we go. There it is right there. And look at that. In less than what? Three minutes? Two minutes? Minute? This is clear coat ready. Now, if I would have used, if I would have used your thing clear, and I would have waited two or three days for that clear to dry so I can color sand it. It would have took me a couple days just to color sand it so I can re-clear it. I would have used, on this tank, I probably would have used two pieces of paper instead of one. And I didn't even really use the whole piece of paper, if you notice. I still got some paper here left that I haven't used and we'll be using it on the fender. So you can see I use minimal water. I'm gonna throw that in there. The next important thing that you need to do immediately is you need to dry it off. So we're gonna go ahead and dry that off just like that. You see how that is? Look at that. I'm gonna come over here, and my hands are clean. All right, make sure your hands are thoroughly clean, wash them off with water, wash them off with soap, and make sure that when you're touching all this, it's clean. You can see right there, this is paint ready. That's it. We're ready to clear coat this. Now, we're not gonna clear coat this tank yet because the owner requested that he wants some type of a scripture wrote across here. So we're going to take this over to our buddy over here in Moab, Mr. Tattoo Guy. And then he'll do that scripture for him. And then we'll bring it back and clear coat it. I noticed right here I just missed a little spot. Watch this. Look at this, guys. Watch. I'm done. That's it. Do you see there? This is the magic to using the inner cloak clear that I showed you, just like that. All right, so there you go. So what we just did is we learned how to sand our inner coat clear. We also saw that by laying down that clear coat, bam, 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 one coat after another, it flows out and lays down super clean. No orange peel. No Reiner liner shit, okay? No Rhino liner, bed liner crap going on here. Nice and smooth. And this is now paint ready. All right, all these are. We got one more situation I wanna show you. And I was gonna go ahead and take this out and I thought, well, you know what? The guy watching this might get a run in it if he tries it, so I gotta show you how to get that run out. So let's get down there on that fender and I wanna show you how to take that run out.
So more than likely, you can't see that run. You can't see the run because we're looking at black. But the run is right here, all right? You can't see it, but it's pretty long. And it starts about right here and then goes down here. And it's probably a sag. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a paint stick out. All right. Now this is for removing the run. Remember that. So we're going to get a paint stick out and we're also going to get a piece of our 1200. We're not using 400. We're not using 600. We're going to use 1200. So I'm going to take the paint stick and then I'm going to break it just like that. All right, and we'll keep that little one just in case we need it. And then I'm going to take my paint stick and I'm going to wrap it around. Or should I say I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to wrap it around the paint stick just like this. And then I'm going to leave that in because that's going to give me a nice handle to hold on to while I sand that. So I'm going to reach down to my bucket. You can't see the bucket, but it's over here. And then once again, I'm going to use minimal water. I'm not going to be up here squirting water on that, pouring water on, use minimal water. And then I'm going to take my stick, I'm going to find my run, and I'm going to concentrate on keeping my stick on the run. So you got to learn how to feel it. But this is the trick on getting your run out is using a paint stick, just like I'm using here. Now, one more thing I want to go ahead and explain. And this is real. This is going to be a real good tech tip for you. If you've never taken a run out and you're afraid to do it, don't be afraid when you're using the Color Blender Intercoat Clear. If you burn through this stuff, it's no big deal. And the reason I say that is because you can come back with your base coat and blend the paint back in there using this type of a clear. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and sand that out. And I notice it's a little bit thick right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get me a piece of 1000. I didn't believe the run was that big, but we already got it out in this area. Let me go get a piece of 1000 and we'll remove the rest. Okay, so I got me some 1,000. I just wet my stick in there. You see, I don't even have a sponge. I'm going to feel that. There it is right there. And I'm just going to take my stick, and I, I want to concentrate on the run only. I want to take my stick and just let the stick right on top of that run. That's all I want to do. If I would use... If I was going to use my soft block, let's say, the soft block would ride over it and around it. All right, does that make sense? So you're, more, you're basically sanding around it instead of on it. So it's very important that we use a solid, solid stick to get our runs out. Another thing I want you to notice is I only put two coats of clear on this. And you see, I'm sanding the shit out of it. Okay? Just like that. Look at that. It's coming right out. I think we got it. I think the run is gone. Let me see. We've got a little bit right here. Right here. This was actually a pretty big run. I'm actually surprised 
I got that run in this paint. Normally I won't get runs like that. Okay, that feels pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now, and this is a good tech tip for everybody out there, what this is, this is a piece of packing foam out of an aftermarket hood box. And what I've done, you can see it's kind of perforated on that side right there. What I've done is I cut a piece down, and now once again, I'm going back to my 1500. And what I'll do is I'll take that block, because this is kind of a stiff block, and I'm gonna go ahead and sand that with 1500. Just like that. And you see, I'm not using a lot of water. Very important. When it comes to this stuff, we're not using a lot of water. Now look what happened. Does everybody see that down there? I burned through that paint. That's okay though. And I'm gonna show you why, okay? I went ahead and burned through that, but it's all right. Because what did I tell you we're working with here? We're working with Color Blender which is basically clear and reducer with no other chemicals, no hardeners, no nothing. So by us blending the paint into this, it will be fine. It won't blister, it won't crackle, it won't do anything. So that run was a lot bigger than I thought, a lot bigger. All right. And now what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and take our flex block, the one that I showed you previously, and then we're gonna blend our sand job into the fender. All right, just like that. And then to finish it off, we get our magic rag here and we wipe it down just like this. And don't let the fender fall. That'd be a big situation. Okay, we got our run out, but look what happened, guys. Can you see that? We gotta fix that. We can't clear coat this till that's fixed. So what are we gonna do, my friend Pete? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go get our touch-up gun and we are gonna blend some paint into that, let that dry, and then we're gonna go ahead and clear coat these and be done with it. Let's get over to the paint table, let's keep going. Okay, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me still? All right, do we still got good audio? Give me a thumbs up. All right, thank you, James. Okay, so here we are at the paint table. Always remember the first thing in painting is safety equipment. Now, what I'm going to do is I got two places that I need to blend. Remember that spot on the hood where there was some trash underneath all the paint? What did we just get done doing? We just got done doing that fender. So the gun of choice on this is gonna be our touch-up gun. Now, you might look at that gun and say, that thing looks like a piece of shit. Well, believe me, sir, that this gun is spotless clean inside, okay? It's a spotless, nice, clean touch gun. I've had this gun for over 30 years. It's a SATA, and it works beautiful. 
So, I got my paint right here. Now, this is our base coat paint. This is not epoxy primer. This is nothing. This is our base coat mixed with reducer. Go ahead and pour it in there. And then what we'll do is we'll go over there and we're gonna go ahead and blend. And you can also see if I can get the lid on this without spilling it, we'll be in business. All right. Um, you can also see I got my clear ready to mix because we're going to go ahead and put the first coat of clear on this while you're with me. And I'm going to end up putting three coats on. And when I put the clear on, um, I'll probably say this again. I'm going to wait approximately 30 to 45 minutes in between each coat. All right. The temperature in my shop now is around 65 degrees. It's about 42 degrees outside. And yes, I'm going to have to use my heaters. Um, I will like to clarify something. I do use my torpedo heaters and I do use kerosene. I don't use diesel fuel and I have been using my heaters and I'm going to show you one right here. Let's go ahead and look at that dog down here. I've had that heater for over 30 years. I've rebuilt it twice and it runs excellent. It, um, it's an awesome situation and it will heat this building up to about 80 degrees in here within 20 minutes. So I also got another one over there in the back. I'm gonna turn them both on. And um, yeah, very good situation. So if you need to heat your building up, uh, don't be afraid of residue. Like some people are saying, oh my God, you're gonna get residue. No, you're not. If you use kerosene, you won't have nothing but clean, fresh heat. Let's go ahead and uh, Get some blend job done. Okay, so we're gonna start right here. Let me get my air hose. And if you mix your paint properly, it should cover very quickly. So by the way that you mix your paint, it's gonna tell you. And of course, uh, one more thing, let me get a rag. I wanna wipe that area off, uh, paper towel. Hang on one second. Okay, before we do any painting, we want to take a nice clean wipe all and wipe our area down just like this. I also see a couple other little spots as I'm looking at it. So we'll go ahead and get those as well. Okay, so very simple, very easy technique. All we're gonna do is take our gun, make sure our settings are proper, and then we're just gonna do that right there, that's about it. And as you can see, that's done. No blistering, no reaction, and it's all blended in, just like that. You wanna make sure, you wanna double check it, you wanna look it over. And bam, there you go. Let's move over to the other uh, fender and we'll get that as well. So I hope you all are enjoying this little video set that I made on painting this beetle. And I thought it would be an important situation to show everybody how to do a double clear job to get an awesome paint job on your vehicle at home. Um, another reason I'm showing you this in this room is to show you and tell you, you do not need a million dollar paint booth to get an awesome, beautiful paint job. All you need is a nice environmentally clean area with a good exhaust system.
Okay, there you go. Here's our fender. Basically, we're going to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to start this one way out here because I want to put kind of a dry coat on it at first. So we're going to start way out here like that. See how I'm doing that? You get the dry coat going first, and then what that does, that'll shock everything into place so you won't have any blistering. So here we go right here. And look at that, it's done. And that's the advantage of using your color blender versus urethane clear coat. Do you see the situation now? Look at that, that's done. That's ready for clear, right there. Um, I just checked our fender and it seems that the run is still there so we got to do a little bit more sanding on that so let's go back over to the fender let's clear that up um, it's very very hard to see these runs and if I don't get it all the way out on this then we're gonna be screwed on that if you know what I mean so we got to get this run out let's get over there and get that out real quick and then, of course, I got my spray gun still ready to use. Uh, we'll get that on there, and then we'll be ready to clear the coat. Okay, unfortunately, <laughs> I hate to tell everybody out there, unfortunately, we did not remove the run all the way. And this is a situation that you're gonna run into. And I'm showing you my mistakes, so learn from them, people. So we're gonna go ahead and get our sandpaper. Hang on one second. Let me go get a new piece, I'll be right back. That was actually a pretty big run. A lot bigger than I thought. Now many of the body shop girls saw it and she freaked out. So when she freaks out, that's telling me it was pretty bad. But uh, okay, so let's go ahead and work on this and try to get this run out real quick. I can still feel it. And if the light hits it just right, you can see it. So. I'm going to go ahead and sand that down. Now, did you notice how quick the base coat dried? Did you all see that? All right. 
When you learn how to properly put the base coat on, it will dry quick in a scenario like we're doing right here. Put it this way, it'll dry quick enough so you can get back to work. It's all up to you, people. It's all up to you how nice you want the work that you're putting out. You can see that this might have been the paint. This might have been in the paint. I don't know. Because we're actually going down. We're actually going down to the primer. It might have been an epoxy primer. See, when you get into a situation like this, you don't know what it could have been. But the only situation I can tell you now is we have got to get rid of that. That has got to go. It's got to go. There's no way that I'm going to clear coat that with that mess on there like that. That's not professional for one aspect. And the customer is paying a lot of money to have a professional job done. So we want to make sure that the job is done properly before we even attempt. Because if I put clear on that, if I tell myself, you know what, fuck it. You can't really see it. I don't think the owner's going to see it. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. What's going to happen is if you try to remove that run after you put your urethane clear on, your three coats of urethane clear, this is what's going to happen. And then what's going to happen? You're going to, have to, you're going to end up painting the whole fucking fender. It's going to take you two or three days because once the urethane clear is applied, you have added activator in that clear. You are not using... Your uh, reducer and color blender anymore. Once the reducer in the paint and the chemicals in the paint itself hit that urethane clear, it's going to crumble and peel and ripple. And it's going to fuck up. So get your shit together and do it right the first fucking time because if you don't, you're going to pay for it in the end. So I think we got it now. Just want to make sure. Feel right there. I feel something right here. Yep, there it is. Yep. So when you have a big run, this is what happens. And this is another reason. This is another situation where it says, I need to go ahead and put color bl blender on my paint job first in case I run into situations. This is one situation that will arise, especially in the winter months when it's cold out. Very, very touchy job when you are painting a car or possibly maybe this fender, okay? You might just be painting this fender only and no, we're not breaking through the primer, okay? Just to let everybody know, there might be somebody leaving a comment saying, oh my God, he broke through the fucking paint. He broke through the primer. He's painting on bare metal. He's a stupid ass. Just to cover your ass, my ass, I'm going to throw that in there. No, we're not. If I did break through the primer and go to bare metal, then I would have to repeat the process by putting epoxy primer on it. So... Let me get my spray gun now. Uh, hold on one second. I want to go over that with some 1500. That was 1000. So we'll just smooth that up a little bit right there like that. Don't ever throw your packings away from aftermarket parts. You should keep them and try to utilize them and make tools out of them like I did with that. There's a good tip for you right there. Because the best tool that you're going to have is the one that you design. Because you made that tool for a specific reason. Okay, now look at that. That's worse than it was the first time. Let me get my spray gun. We're going to redo that so we can get some clear on this shit and close the video down.
Okay, here we go. Repeat number two. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this paint in here. I want to leave that in case we run into any other imperfections somewhere down the line where we might have to put a little paint in. Um, so this is a handy item here. One gun, one universal gun for everything, and always have a good high-quality touch-up gun. That's very important. You just saw why, matter of fact. So what I'm going to use is I got this brand of clear. This is universal. That means you can put this on top of any urethane paint on the market. And this is a medium solid. This is not a European high solid clear. I don't like high solid clears because when they dry, they dry like a rock. They're very hard to color sand and buff. There's only one clear that I found that actually was half-assed nice and it was called Roberlo. I can't find that clear anywhere. I actually made a video on it. They contacted me and wanted me to make more videos, and I refused to. Um, I mean, you know, I'm not in the business to do free advertising for people. I've already made my video. I've already showed you the Roberlo. It works fucking great. If you can find it, get it. So let's get back on to the situation. I'm using um, MS-52, and I'm also going to use 06 hardener, which is slow. You all are probably looking at me saying, this guy's fucking crazy. He should be using medium or fast on a day like this. No. I found with the gun that I use and the system that I use that slow is going to be better. That's another reason I wait 30 to 40 minutes between each coat. Slow is going to dry better and it's going to flow out where there's minimal, minimal, probably no orange peel at all. Let me turn my heaters on. We got to get the temperature up in here and then we're going to mix our clear. like this in a room you want to go ahead and put water around the parts that you're painting I'm gonna go ahead and get that bucket and I'm gonna squeeze water around those three pieces so let me get that done real quick and then we'll mix up our clear
clear up why we got our heaters going. Can I go ahead and say that again? Kerosene. Fucking kerosene. I'm not using fucking diesel. I'm not using gasoline. I'm using fucking kerosene for the 37th fucking time. Okay, one more thing that I want to do before I put my clear on is I want to take a white ball and wipe everything down using my blower. I just found that other spot. Let me go ahead and get there with my touch-up gun.
Hold on, you wipe it down. Right there. All right, it's approximately 80 degrees in here. It's actually 78 degrees in here. There's my thermostat. So it's 78 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and put the first coat on there. The first coat that I put on is not gonna be super thick. You always wanna put your first coat, that's why we're putting three coats. You always wanna put your first coat on as a medium wet coat. That way, it eliminates runs when you put the other coats on. Now, I want you to watch, and I'm going to show you when I get done. I want you to see how liquid glass this looks just from using the DBC 500. We definitely don't want to paint with this on. When you shoot your clear coat, don't ever wear anything like you just saw me take off that is going to create static electricity. Very important on that, too. Let's get this bitch fucking clear coated. I still got a car out there that I got to do.
Okay, there you go. We're going to do a quick walk over there. You can see it looks pretty much like liquid glass from here. Once again, I want to say that is a medium wet coat. I got to let that dry for 30 minutes and then I will go ahead and apply the last two final coats on it. Let me get my flashlight and show you what that looks like. Okay, so there you go. I took you through all the steps, basically, of applying and doing a high quality, super high end uh, fucking show car finish. Um, I gotta get the bug done now. So this is gonna be an all day deal. And uh, I'm not gonna come back until probably a couple days when we get ready to start color sanding and buffing it to finish up this little series on painting this Volkswagen Beetle and actually showing you inside tricks, hidden tricks of my trade to let you know you can do this, all right? Let me get this shit done and I'll see you in a couple days on this little mini, mini series called Volkswagen Beetle Painted. Uh, it'll probably be part four or some bullshit like that. We'll see you later. And that car over there, we'll be painting the same way. And this Camaro, we're going to be doing it the same way as well. So we'll see you all later. Take it easy. And I hope you enjoy this uh, little fucking situation. And for all the haters out there, go fuck yourself. You're just a piece of shit anyway.